Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. It is so good to be with y'all with our, our live today. Praise the Lord. Coming on Facebook Live, also on YouTube. You know, I've got a teaching that I'm going to be dealing with, and I think you guys are going to absolutely enjoy this. So I'm hoping many of you are able to tune in. Amen. And catch what we're about to teach on this Facebook Live. I'm going to try to do my share screen because I want to show you guys something right here real, real quick. You know, and this is what the title of the message is. Glory be to God. The title of the message is Deliverance Insight on the Spider Spirit Spells and, uh, Identified and Broken. Deliverance Insight on the Spider Spirit Spells Identified and Broken. And I'm going to take my time and teach this particular teaching. So I ask y'all to tune in. And before I do anything else, I would like to take the time to thank every single one of you that have uh, cashed up us a $5 donation to help what Evelyn and I are doing in the Lord. We appreciate that. So many of you that come with us on YouTube and what have you, Evelyn and I try our best not to mention money a lot so that we won't be sidetracked by that or have somebody complaining or, you know, just stuff that just I don't need because I've got bigger, more important things to do in the kingdom. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as I come today, Father, with this teaching, Deliverance Insight on the Spider Spirit, Spells Identified and Broken, I pray, Lord God, as I go through these notes, that the people are able to hear and they're able to understand what we're trying to show them. Now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that I am redeemed and blood washed. I thank you for being born again, that Christ Jesus is my Redeemer, Yeshua. In his mighty name, we have salvation healing and breakthrough. Father, we ask also, Father, that as I am teaching this teaching, every backlash, every attack, everything that the enemy will try to send against us to hinder, to bind or disrupt this teaching, I pray by the power of God that their, their devices fall to the ground and come to naught. Lord God, save and deliver those that are operating in witchcraft and the occult. Draw them out of Satan's kingdom into the kingdom of God's dear son. And Father God, there are many that are listening at me today that have gone through these particular attacks with shadow figures of spiders, spider field and spiders and things crawling under their skin, just different manifestations. And what I'm going to do with this particular teaching, brothers and sisters, is to allow many of you to get insight as to how this happened. I appreciate everyone coming on. George Pearson, God bless you. Apostle George Pearson, God bless you. I see you. Amen. Brazilda, one of my church members. How you doing, Brazilda? And Sister Margaret, come on. God bless you all. Now, when I go into this particular teaching, I want you all to understand that I do my historical background. I like to do my get my receipts together in the teachings that we do. In the Ministry of Deliverance, you will come across often spiritual strongholds that are attacking people and people don't have a reference for what's going on. So I'm getting ready to take you into the share stream part and there goes my notes there and here we go. We're off to the races, amen. Let me get this stuff right out of my way, praise God. Amen, praise the Lord. Now we're gonna take you into the share stream. I'm gonna make it a little, little bit larger. There we go, because we want to make sure that everyone sees this. And if you are one uh, that wants to bless us with a, a cash app, our cash app is General Ivory Hopkins, dollar sign, General Ivory Hopkins. And we usually ask people, if you want to sell a $5 cash app to us and bless us, Elton and I appreciates it. Amen. And guess what? If you don't feel led to sow anything, but just enjoy the message, amen, we're here for that. We just don't want to get tied down with begging for offerings, pleading for people to give because the Lord is going to keep us regardless. Amen. And supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Now, as I was looking at this Sunday, I uh, had a uh, young lady that I prayed with Sunday. And most of you that got my YouTube channel saw where we put that prayer up. She got delivered from the spider spirits that was set against her. And I said, my God, I mean, there were some things that I had already researched and we started hitting them hard, but I thought I would come back with this teaching 
to explain why some of you have experiences with spiders. And I'm not just talking about spiders crawling around the house. I'm talking about dream attacks and warfare. Now, we're going to read a few scriptures uh, coming out of the book of Job. We're going to start at Job chapter 8, verse 14. Job chapter 8, verse 14. And by the way, you see here where I got Bildad, Job's repentance. Now, the Bildad, this one, Bildad was one of Job's friends. Guess what? The counsel of the words that Bildad was saying to Joseph during this time in Job chapter 8, verse 13 and 14, he was not led by God. I'm going to repeat that again. He was not led by God. And he says some things about the spider. By the way, God bless you also, Sister Francesca McCoy, Apostle McCoy. How are you doing, Apostle Francesca McCoy? We love you. God bless you. All right, let's look at this thing here. Job chapter 8. Verse 14, and I'm going to try to slow down. I'm kind of excited because I've been seeing people get delivered from these attacks. And now I have reference through my research to explain why this is happening. Job 8 and 14, whose hope shall be cut off, whose trust shall be a spider's web. Now listen to what Bildad said. He says, such is the identity of those who forget God. So the hope of the godless will perish. Now he was actually saying to Job, Job, you have actually are uh, being a, you're going through what you're going through because God has cut you off because you have uh, you have lost your destiny. Th these spider attacks are attacks that go after destiny. And by the way, Beldad, as I said earlier, was mis misled. Look what it says in verse 14. His confidence is fragile. His security is in a spider's web. Now, the attack of these spirit spiders come against people's confidence. And look what it says in verse 15. He leaned on his web, but it gives way. He holds fast, but it does not endure. Now, when you look at this verse, and, and it's going to all make sense as I'm wrapping it together. And, uh, and the New International Version says, what they trust in is fragile. What they rely on is a spider's web. So when you're dealing with attacks from a spider's web, it makes things in your life, confidence to be fragile. Things in your life seem like it's not holding together by the web that has been coming against you by the enemy. New Living Translation says, their confidence hangs by a thread. They are leaning on a spider's web. So another attack of this spirit, and I'm gonna put it right here, it makes your confidence seems as if it is hanging on a thread. Like you could lose it at any moment. And then we're going to go to the English Standard Version. Like I said, I've got other notes that's going to really wrap this all together. Also, it says his, uh, Job 8 and 14 in the English Standard Version says his confidence is savored and his trust is it's a spider's web. So what do we got here? So in the attack, number one, we got right here where confidence seems to be savored. Now, this is the mental and emotional effects of this webbing of the spider. Also, it seems like the confidence hangs in a thread, barely holding on. Got that? Next, their trust, their trust is fragile. Got that? Very fragile, as if they just not, don't have any strength at all. When you get these attacks coming at you, amen, you can feel these things coming at you. So what am I saying? When this web attack, when these spirits that are manifesting as shadows, as spiders, as stuff coming at you in the dream realm, they're trying, number one, to make your trust fragile. Therefore, your trust and your hope and God being your shield and your strength gets tampered with. Number two, your confidence seems like you're just hanging on by a thread. How many of y'all have ever talked to somebody and you say, well, how are you doing? And your dad said to you and stuff, I'm just hanging on. In other words, barely making it, child. I'm just hanging on. Now, this is an activation uh, of the spirit spider attack. Now, and by the way, this teaching that I'm doing, I don't like people to hear me do a teaching and immediately holler, I got that, I got this. Because you ain't got to claim having any type of spiritual attack. You will know. You will know that something different is operating by the pattern of things that I'm about to show you. And also it says the confidence seems like it's savored. Got that? Now in Isaiah 59 verse 
6 says, their cobwebs cannot be made in the cloth and they cannot cover themselves with their works. Their deeds are sinful deeds and their acts violent are they in their hands. Now this is, let me put this here, a tax of the wicked. Got that? This is the attack of the wicked. Got that? Their cobwebs cannot be made in the cloth. They cannot cover themselves with their works. Their deeds are sinful deeds and the acts are violence. I ask the Father in the name of Jesus that every cobweb that is weaved against us, every stronghold that the enemy has someone that trying to cast spells to tie us up like we're caught in a spider's nest, in a spider's web, I ask you, Lord God, that not let it be covered up. Got that? Lord, do not let that thing be covered up. Expose their works. Everybody got me right there? So, Lord God, uncover their works and their sinful deeds and acts and violence and, and all this. And so, for whatever violence that they're trying to use against me, I ask you, Lord God, to break it, to uncover it in your mighty name of Jesus. Now, here goes another thing. When I was praying deliverance with that sister Sunday, evening that we got to praying and all of a sudden we started dealing with vipers eggs and the weaving of the spider's web she literally are you hearing me was going through deliverance and now here goes what i said i'm, I'm gonna read this verse to you isaiah 59 verse 5 they hatched the eggs of vipers so father i ask in the name of jesus christ my lord that everything that been hatched by the viper by the adder, by the serpent. I ask you to destroy it, Father, in Jesus' name. I ask you to abort every egg of the viper. Also, the, the weaving of the web. Father God, every web that have been weaved against me, Lord God, against us, we ask you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, to destroy that web. Well, whosoever eats their eggs will die. Crack one open and the viper is hatched. So I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that that thing trying to feed somebody in a sleep. And by the way, the Lord is Lord, whether you're asleep or woke, sweetheart. I don't want none of y'all saying to me, I had a dream. And since I had the dream, the demons are in charge. Uh-uh, sweetheart, I got a reality. And the reality is uh, that on the cross of Christ, uh, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and Christ said, it is finished. So whatsoever is eaten, whatsoever this thing's trying to feed me, I command the death that is trying to cause. I command the stealing that is trying to cause. I command the killing that is trying to cause to be stopped and hinder, hinder and broken to pieces in Jesus' name. You all do know the enemy comes but one thing. Steal, kill, and destroy. Those who send these spells using these spiders, they are operating in the realm of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. And any viper's egg, any web thing, I command its power to be broken. Now, let me go on a little bit further here. And these are people that were experiencing spider spirit attacks. Now, some of these I got off of my YouTube channel and what have you, and I didn't put the person's name there. They, they were talking to me. These people were asking me questions on Ivory Hopkins YouTube. By the way, many of you are asked to for you to subscribe to my channel so that you will be able to pop in and, and hear me when I come up with newer stuff, amen? When I come up with other teachings in the gospel and in the victory of the name of Jesus to bring us deliverance. Now, in Proverbs chapter 26, verse two, I mean, it says, as the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so a curse causeless shall not come. In short, the enemy cannot curse us unless he gets a foothold. The enemy is looks for a cause to curse. Now, I want to show you something uh, 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 that people were sharing to me. And in the red, you're going to see where I broke it down. Now, this is a letter from a person. Follow me. It said, I definitely went through this last year, talking about the spider manifestation. I dreamed of a spider web attached to my feet. Now look where the spider web was attached. Incredible warfare doing, dealing with this spirit. I'm free, thank you, Jesus. But that individual 
went through this warfare for about a year, if I remember correctly. And I said to them in the, in the red, answer them back, the enemy was trying to tie up your progress or journey, but the Lord delivered. Notice up here it said, the enemy attached to the, look right here. Look right here. Let me slow down then. Yeah, right now. Notice where he's at. The enemy, this spider was trying to web the person's feet. And everybody knows in a dream, when you're walking, pacing, and doing things, amen, that is progress either going forward or progress hindered. So the enemy was trying to tie up that person's progress and journey. But the Lord delivered this individual. Let me read another, another one. Here goes this person saying, now check this one out. This is timely. I had a dream, my family, that I haven't seen in a while. All had spiders. Now notice, all of the family had this spider. This thing was all through that family line. And they tried to force me to have one. But I said, no. And one of the spiders tried to bite me. But it had no effect. And I gave it back to her. Now whoever her was in the family, I gave it back to her and left the whole home to play bubbles outside on an open field. Now, and said, I kept, and, she, and the person said to me, I kept wondering what it means. And then I saw this. Well, number one, this individual's family line was snared trying to force it on her. The snare that was in this person's family line was trying to pull her in. The bite of the spider, its bite was unsuccessful. Got that? It tried next, tried to put the whole family line webbed up the spider's trap behind it, behind the uh, you. So in short, she the whole thing, when she turned around and said up here that uh, I left the whole home, I left the whole home. In short, she got out from under what was under that family line. And there comes a time that the way to break loose when you're seeking your freedom, it's almost like God told Abraham, come out from among them and separate yourself. There comes a time that there are strongholds that the family line is in agreement with that, that they tried to for, they tried to force on me. Notice what she said. They tried to force it on me. And in that dream, she refused to take it. So in that particular dream, Laura was showing her prophetically that there were things operating in her family line that they had become comfortable with. Is anybody getting this? That they had become comfortable with but she was not. Oh, by the way, let me share this. The spirit of God, not, not just devils, demons, and spirits, the spirit of God will prophetically sometimes show you the images and the pictures in a dream prophetically to show you what the enemy has tried over a bloodline, what the family line has been operating under, and show you you breaking out of it. Now, the, the strength of you breaking out Hear what I'm getting ready to say, because this is what has been messing up a lot of people. The strength of you breaking out is not just that the dream said, I got away, but that the Lord Jesus Christ's work on the cross says you got away. I want to make this quite clear. And some people, yeah, I'm going to slow down. Please listen at me. Be very, very careful of having dream attacks or things revealed to you in a dream, and in the dream, it looks like, well, I wasn't able to get away from that, or I fought it and got away. Then I had another dream, I fought it and didn't look like I got away. Be careful of relying on the pictures of the dream to be in your deliverer, because the dream, vision, prophetic insight, or even demonic attack, is not the proof of your freedom or bondage. The work on the cross is. Now, I hope I don't lose two or three people. I'm going to say this one more time. Because I, because in the counseling that I do, I talk to thousands of people. And many of them that tell me like they have dream warfare coming at them like this, spiders or whatever. If in that dream, they look like they did not. Uh, kill the spider or or step on the spider or run away from it, they feel like, I've got this spirit. Oh my God, it's got me. That is not a lie. That, that is not the truth. 
That is nothing but a lie. Excuse me, I said not a lie. Meaning that is a simple, bold-faced lie. Come on now. The enemy showing you images does not prove that he is in charge of anything. The truth is that I have to rely on the work of the cross, the word of God, and the truth of that word, whether I am asleep or woke. So be careful of accepting the enemy reigning over your life in a dream as if, oh, it happened in a dream. Well, the cross is no good no more. It happened in a dream. Well, what Jesus did, taking the keys of death and the grave, that don't matter. And the enemy did something in a dream. What I get the Holy Ghost inside of me is powerless. That's what I'm trying to say. Are you hearing me? Now, let me move on to this next person. This person said, I used to have dreams of spiders and webs, mainly in 2019, which was my worst year I have experienced. Thank you for always exposing darkness so we can be free. I thank God for your apostle. And here, God clearly brought you out completely of a bad year. But the enemy was trying to, that spider was trying to web you up. It was trying to put you in its web, in its trap, and stop you from accomplishing what God has for your life. Now, let me share another dream here. And then, then I'm going to get into exposing some other things about how this stuff is done. Apostle Hopkins, now this one here is, a, I call this is a good one with a lot of revelatory meat in it. Listen at this. Another dream a person sends me. Apostle Hopkins, I saw my daughter wrapped in a web. Now, watch this. Her daughter is wrapped in a web. She has not spoken to me since she has been talking to her father and his witch. I'm not going to get into whoever his father met. I'm not getting into that. That's a, that's a, I'm, not, I'm not attacking a person. I'm saying that. That's what I'm trying to say. They both told her to forget about me. I, and I raised her all her life. They tried my son and it didn't work. God showed me her as an infant. Now, this is going to be very important later on. God showed me her as an infant wrapped up in a web. Notice, she saw the daughter as an infant wrapped in a web, wrapped in a web with spiders on it. Help me, please. I will be praying the scriptures. And she got something now. I Now I'm getting ready to give the answer that I feel the Lord was showing me. Number one. The web bound up your relationship with your daughter. That web right up here is what bound up the relationship with your daughter. The enemy used that web. Now watch people, it's gonna get good, it's gonna get better. The web bound up, the spider spirit, the spirit spider webbed or tied off y'all's relationship. Now when you're praying, you wanna ask the father, untangle every lie untangle every wound, untangle every issue, Father, in Jesus' name, that is operating against my daughter and my relationship. I'm going a little bit further here. Next, your daughter shown as an infant represented the opening for this web to work was an emotional situation in you and your daughter's relationship affected as a doorway used against you. Now, so in other words, watch this, that her being an infant, possibly from the wound. I'm going to say this right here. Now, this is a big right here. Now, I want y'all to catch what I'm going to say here. Hold on. Let me even darken that. What have you? Let me just put a little. Yeah, right there. Notice what I said. Your daughter shown as an infant in that dream represented an opening for this web to work an opening for this attack of the enemy to kind of wrap your daughter up away from you. Even though it happened from her father and whoever he's with now. Once again, got that? Okay, and it, it, it hit in the area of the emotions. Now, why do I say the emotions? Watch this. It was possibly from the wound or after her birth used against you. Your son was unaffected because his mind Will and emotions had no door to operate him against you. In other words, when these people, now this is not always the case, but listen at me. Say it again, Brother Ivory, thank you. This is not always the case. When I look at this sister's dream, again, I'm going to read it. I saw my daughter wrapped in a web. 
Mm -hmm. She has not spoken to me since she has been talking to her father and his witch. They both told her to forget about me. Now, how come that them telling the daughter to forget about the mother was effective, but it was not effective when they told, tried to do the same thing to the son? Glad you asked. I'm telling you that that infant thing that she saw, got that where it says right here, God showed me her as an infant, as an infant. In other words, it could be a, a rejection situation that was already operating, that already had gotten in between the mother and daughter. And as the daughter got older and the father and whoever he's with now started speaking against the mother, it was easy for the daughter to emotionally accept it because of something already happening, already set in the infant. Now I'm gonna tell y'all something. The enemy, what he could turn, look, I want to, I'm gonna say this. Ah, y'all bear with me, please bear with me. I'm gonna stay with this one for a while. I will never forget, I had a young man in my church years ago. His father, and, and his, his father and mother, it was a son and a daughter. His father and mother did everything equal for them as they could do. I mean, they did everything fair as they could do before son and daughter. But that young man had a false spirit of rejection. This demon inside of him of rejection and insecurity made him hate his father. And his father got at the church. I remember his father was begging him, son, whatever I've done, forgive me. Son, what, what, and, then, and what really happened? Let, let me go ahead and wrap this up. God, I'm trying to push ahead, but let me just slow down because y'all don't mind me taking my time and working this thing. I did a mass deliverance. The power of God was moving mightily. All of a sudden, the young man started having severe pain in his right leg. In other words, an infirmity had attacked his right leg. Now, when I went to the young man to pray for him, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost said to me, tell him to forgive his father because that spirit of infirmity is not breaking because of the unforgiveness. I said to him, I said, young man, I said, let me show you something. I said, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, father, I bind this thing from doing what it's doing to his leg. And I command you, I bind you. And the pain stopped. And the young man was still pulling at his leg, but it, and the pain shut down. I said, in the name of Jesus, young man, listen to me. And I started talking to him. I said, son, I said, the Lord told me to tell you that to stop what was happening to your leg, that infirmity, uh, that spirit of infirmity. And I said again, a spirit of infirmity had attached itself to the anger and hate that he had for his father. Then his father begged him and said, son, whatever I've done, I'm sorry, son. I, I, I just want to make things right with you. The young man looked at me and his father, and he said to me, I will not let go of my anger towards my father. I want to make him pay. And he, I said, son, you, that thing messing with your leg, that thing is causing your joints to be affected by the anger and the rage and the bitterness. As I said, this is not always the case. So don't go run out there and make an adoption out of this. And the young man said to me, I will not. And guess what? I could not cast the demon out and I could not stop what was happening to his leg. Now, what does that have to do with what I'm sharing with this particular question that was asked me? I, I said that the, God showed her as an infant wrapped in a web. I actually believe that the father and the other woman was able to convince the daughter to turn on the mother because as an infant, there was issues there already in, at play. Are y'all hearing me? In other words, the infant, the baby, either from the wound or from the bloodline, are y'all hearing me? Either from the wound or from the bloodline, the separation of mother and daughter already has spirits operating. And this demonic interference of breaking the mother from her child became a web, like a spider's web, something tangled, something trapping them where they could not get along. But the son did not have that same effect. So your son was, so the son was unaffected. Got that guys? The son was unaffected. Now the, the word spider, meaning doors to the coat has been opened 
and influence. Now, I shared this about drugs because this, it mentions that when I was studying, it was mentioning how that uh, the addiction of drugs is like a spider web where it tangles a person up until every move they make, they only tangle themselves more. Anyone who understands even slightly the nature of a natural spider, I, as a kid, I saw a fly get hooked into a spider's web one time. And, and when the fly flew into it, the more the fly struggled, the harder the, the knitting came. The more the fly struggled, the tapestry, that evil cage that the enemy had used, that the spider had used, and trapped him. Those that do wickedly use symbolism in the same manner. So uh, this spirit, one of the spirits symbolizing how drug ties one's life up. Now, a web is being spun to catch you. That's also what it means. When you see, when God shows you a spider like that, or even, listen, even if you saw a shadowy spider against the wall or in the room, don't freak out like it's got you. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now, I bind you. I rebuke you. I take authority over you. Matter of fact, I command whatever visitation or person is sending you as a visitation, I ask the Father in Jesus' name to put you on lockdown. Get out of my property. As for me and my house, we sort of, I mean, come back at that thing. So a web is being spun to catch you. That's what that, seeing that spider like that. Also, it's areas of deception. Some, uh, sometimes the type and color and characteristics of the spider is very important because there's different types of spiders that function a different way. Now, check this out. Now, uh, these spider webs, these spirit spells being used by spider. Now, I'm going to say it again. These spirit spells using the spider as the catalyst or the token thing to use to operate. Here goes what it does. Number one. It, in, it, it intercepting the prey. So it is an interceptor. It tries, the spider's web tries to catch things. Now, sometimes there are people that this thing is web attacking their destiny or purpose. Matter of fact, the Indians had a something called, I think it was the spider woman. Uh, one of the things she did, she was in charge of catching the dreams. And that as a spider doing that. Though there are there are people who work witchcraft who tries to intercept you, you as a prey. Also, listen at this: if it can't just intercept you as a prey and bring you totally in, too, it absorbs it. It will absorb your momentum without breaking or stopping. In short, you will be moving on in the things that you're doing, and it's like all of a sudden you hit a web, boom. And you're going like, I can't get any further. What in the heck? I can't get any further than that. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. So it also absorbs your momentum. Also, it is a trapping the prey by entangling it or sticking to it. It's retention. That's what this curse does. So when someone sends this type of spider web thing at you, when you see that in a dream realm, or when you see that as a this shadow here, because some of y'all are prophetic. Y'all can see in the spirit. You're seeing something that is coming to intercept things that belongs to you. But in the name of Jesus, you will not intercept nothing that belongs to me. I will fulfill everything. Come on, somebody that God called us to do. It also likes to absorb momentum, slow down, hinder, or bind. Say it with me, absorb momentum. And also, it likes to trap its prey, entangle it, and stick to it. Now, there is a, also a divination part of these spirit spiders. The, the divination part is called arachnomancy. <laughs> pardon my language. Arachnomancy. Pardon me, my English. I'm a Delawarean and tough, tough sometimes for me to say certain things. Arachnomancy. That is divination by interpreting the behavior of spiders and casting and conjuring spells by using spiders in some symbolic way. Are you hearing me? I ask the Father in the name of Jesus that anybody that is trying to use this arachnomancy against my life, against my person, destiny, I ask the Father to break everything that you're trying to do in Jesus' name. Now, look what, listen what it says here. The study of the arachnomancy arachnomancy, if I can pronounce it right, y'all bear with me, amen, is number one, is the study of the appearance and behavior of spiders or, or the pattern of their webs. 
two, the ability to take control over spotters with the intent to use them for attacking or similar purposes. That's what this is. Three, it is divination of patterns. For example, geometric patterns and tapestry. Now I'm going to say something to you. This, you see this right here? Geometric, geometric patterns and tapestries. Guess what? Sunday when I was doing that, sisters, me, me, it was me and Evelyn doing it together. When we were doing that sister's deliverance, she gave me a poem that God had given her. Now, this was before we had started her deliverance. And in that poem, now watch this, Simone and Simone Aiken. Watch this, my sister in the Lord. Love you, girlfriend. Love you and the Lord. This woman of God, it, she gives me this piece of paper. She said, Apostle, this is a poem that the Lord gave me. She said, I know these spiders and, and these other things are harassing me. She said, but I want to show you something God gave me. So I took her poem and I looked at it. And in that poem, the spirit of God said, you are my tapestry. I have designed you and created you for my purpose. I have webbed and designed your life by my own desire for you. And when we begin to read that and take authority, I put it right alongside of where God said that we were formed and created in his image. The demon went crazy. The spirit inside of her, that spider spirit, that spell that had been conjured in their fine it went bonkers and God began to just deliver her. All right, now I'm gonna move on past that. So remember, these spider webs in these spells are trying to design tapestries. They're trying to design traps. They're trying to control and manipulate and operate with divination. Okay, let's go on a little bit further here. Now I got here, I did just a little bit of study, bear with me. Methods and histories of spiders in other countries and the occult beliefs. Because I didn't want to sound crazy to y'all. Can I tell y'all something? Look, can we talk? Let's talk. One of the things that I try to be very, very careful of as a deliverance teacher is not go study so much uh, occult demons do this and the occult people do that until I sound almost like I'm giving glory to some devil or some occult folk. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If I study anything that the enemy has been doing to people, I study it to prove that the Lord, he is God, and above him there is no, no other. You have to be very careful and discerning when you go into the enemy's camp and expose him. Make sure you don't incorporate demonic teaching in the truth of God's word. I said it. And yeah, now, let me move on with this. Now, some of the modern and history of spiders in other countries and occult beliefs. In northern Peru, the ancient pre-Columbian civilization had many, many spider diviners. That's, that, this was not unusual to them. According to Murray Proctor in Legend of the Stars, 1922, in, in China, the use of casting spells on the seventh day or the seventh moon to catch spiders and put them into insect boxes for purposes of divination and what have you. One was done in the morning, eight days, the box was open. And if the spider had spun a thick web during the night, the omen was good. But if they had remained idle, the omen was bad. And by the way, even what I'm sharing here is not all of that ridiculous stuff that they, that, that they were doing, okay? What I just shared with you is the fact that it's not unusual in other countries, other nations, that the spider was revered and used about to do things of an occult nature. Now, let's look at Cameroon. I think this guy named is Paul Gouvier. I'm probably uh, hacking that at, up. But in Cameroons, in his study, spider divination in the Cameroons, he mentioned four sets of cards used for yamba divination. And by the way, I see nothing on here about the four sets of cards and the cards do this and the cards do that. I'm just telling you that the fact that in spider divination, they were using cards as well. Got that? Now, here goes a crazy one that I found. Listen to this, modern day beliefs. Before I read of any of this as a believer in Christ Jesus, our steps are ordered by the Lord. Everybody got me? Before I read any of this other stuff, I believe in Psalms chapter 37, verse 23, 
And the, by that declares that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he shall fall seven times, fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. And the reason why I'm putting it there, because when I show you some of the things that these spider incantations have been used to operate in, I want you to know that you, the church, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Don't sit around and have a dream and end up uh, allowing your shield of faith to be pulled down because you see this spider or you've seen the shadow of it or seen the image of it. Push back, fight back, but do not use that as a measuring stick. Oh, I'm bound and they got me, please. Now, here goes some of the manifestation that these people who use this wickedness have done. Let me get this right about there. Here we go. Now, one. Seeing a spider in the morning, they do that. Sometimes these morning attacks operate spiritual grief. Do y'all hear me? I'm only showing this as an example of why some of these attacks you're seeing in the morning, at night, as shadows. You wake up two or three o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden you feel depressed or grieved. Seeing a spider at noon, anxiety. Now, these are the treacherous designs that some spell, now I, I, I have nothing about the spells. I just have I have on here what they're trying to do. Also, in, uh, seeing a spider in the evening, financial loss. Guess what? I come against, in the name of Jesus, every stronghold spider spell that's trying to bring grief, anxiety, or financial loss coming against me or anybody that I know. I break it in Jesus' name. And all the thing I want the church to know is that there are people out here doing this, and I don't want you ignorant. Rather than freaking out, going like, I wish somebody could tell me what this means. I'm here trying to do it. I'm here trying to explain it, okay? Seeing a spider spin, spin web may indicate that there is a plot against you. And others will receive gifts instead of you. So this type of web spinning, where the enemy is trying to spin a web, trying to take and block you and hinder you from getting to what belongs to you. Everybody got that? Let me go on a little bit further. And by the way, in the name of Jesus Christ, I do not accept that anyone's going to get anything that belongs to me. Amen. Glory be to God. Lord God, you set on high. Lord God, I thank you and I praise you, Heavenly Father, that every gift, every ability, whether it be finances, whether it be my emotions, uh, glory be to God, every web that is spent against me to try to catch uh, or take away that which belongs to me, I break it in Jesus' name. Why? Because God has given us the church, his body, that authority. And I got on all my armor. How many of y'all have that armor up? I got on all my armor. I got on the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. My feet showed up shod with the preparation of the gospel. So should yours be. Next, going on, according to more primitive interpretations, spiders are mean people sucking the blood of their victims until the last drop. So there are some folks that operate like a spider. Now, basically, did y'all know that spiders basically are supposed to be carnivorous? They're supposed to be eating, eating flesh or more or less. But in some cases, when a spider gets a fly, it sucks the liquid or what we would call blood out of it. And what I mean. And there are some people like a like a spider. And what I remember, there are different types of spider. And there are people that are listening at me. Y'all be using different spiders, using them to conjure spells. I command all your work to fail. I command all your incantations to fail. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke it, I break it, I strongly come against it. And by the way, I am like Teflon. As long as I stay upright before God, nothing you send against me will stay. And I have no fear. Moving on, none of you, I fear God. Come on. So also, according to more primitive interpretation, spiders are mean people sucking the blood of their victim until the last drop. The spider's negative energy is also associated with magic or magicians. And I'm not talking about sleight of hands. Uh, however, in classical magic, talisman and ominous are often shaped as spiders. Did you hear me? Talisman and I'm going to say this to you. You call yourself a believer. Don't be wearing omelets with spiders. Listen, I'm going to say this. And, I, and here we go. We're going to have two or three people get mad and ignorant. 
I don't know why somebody that say would want skulls and bones upon their body, whether it's designed around your neck or on your clothing. I don't know why anybody say would want webs and, 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 and spider webs and all of that associated with you. What, 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 wait, what? What are you doing? Why would you have anything associated with darkness a part of your life, Christian? Now I'm going to move on past that. Are you hearing me? Now, the, another thing y'all know, just in basic teaching, arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. Now, fear, it might not be immediately obvious that the presence of a cobweb strikes fear in people until we recognize that arachnophobia, the intense fear of spiders, is the most common phobia in the world. So you understand, if e this evil, this the power of the spirit of fear and terror is so tied to this thing that it is the most common phobia in the world, the fear of spiders, arachnophobia. I was looking for something else to hear. I'm going to keep on going, going, uh-huh. Yes, Lord, thank you. Let me go on past that. Y'all bear with me. The psychology entanglement. Listen at this. Cobwebs also have been another striking, less obvious quality to them. Now, listen at the psychological entanglement, the psychological entanglement. Now, this here, the attack of these spiders, the attack of these images, the attack of the fear of a physical spider, it is there to cause the intense, listen at this, they inspire a sense of entanglement, of being trapped or stuck in a situation beyond your control. So here's someone done going to some doggone body. Yeah, I said it. Done going to somebody saying, I don't want them to make it. I want them to be entangled. I want them to be trapped. I want them to be stuck. I want to control them. There are people that wicked. Listen to another one. All energy expanded by the prey at distanglement itself is wasted. So it drains your energy. Harder you fight, seems like it doesn't break. Now I'm gonna tell you what, what, what it's trying to capitalize on. Stay with me, stay with me. What it is trying to do is to get you to come out of the shield of faith, out of that the work of the cross is sufficient against it. I'm gonna say it again. I can't say this but a thousand hundred times. The work of the cross is sufficient. It is finished. So no matter what stronghold I'm coming against, whether it's a stronghold that, that I've been battling for a week or a year, the cross still works. The blood still works. His name is still all powerful. And you have to stay there. Stay there. Are you hearing me? Because what it is trying to do through fear, intimidation, false visions, false interpretations, it's trying to, and, and all your energy, it's trying to expand it. That's what it does to its prey. It gets you webbed up and wet. But you got to understand, I got my armor on. Come on. I got my war clothes on. Look what it says here in the Hindu. In Hinduism, spiders have long been thought to be masters of Maya, the Hindu term for illusion. And that is why they are so revered. And notice this word here, the master... The term, they are the master of illusion. Now, why am I highlighting the word illusion? Because the people that I have had in my deliverance sessions and the counseling and deliverance I've done, many of them have been hit with strong illusions. Things that just keep appearing before their eyes and sometimes not just sleep, even while they're woke. Now, let me move on. So in the name of Jesus, every illusion, every image that you're showing me, spider spirit, I rebuke you. I'm not moved. Listen at this. And I'm going to mess it all up with this. But check this out. Eighty five percent of the people that I talk to who are being hit with demonic illusions, the illusion actually does nothing to them. I said, well, after you've seen this shadow, then what? Well, well, apostle, uh, 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 I seen the shot. I said, and then what? And they go, well, well, I went to work. I said, okay. And you were able to go to work. Yes, you were able to cook breakfast. Yep. You were able to drive your car right on to the job. Yep. But but it showed up again. But I said, see, so what happens, what I try to get them to understand is you tell that thing that I'm not bowing to your 
image, not bowing to your illusion. Yeah, you are there. I'm not telling the people they're not experiencing this. Listen, oh my God, I wish I could share some of y'all, some of the attacks that I've had come at me and at me and Evelyn. And we've literally got right up. She seemed to sit on the edge of the bed. I said, oh my God, if he thinks that's going to stop me, he's bad and mistaken. My dear friend, you got to understand, regardless what image the enemy tries to show you, you not forget the image of who you are. I actually told a demon one time, you're a spirit, so am I. <laughs> and I'm a spirit with the Holy Ghost on the inside. You're corrupted. You're defiled and you're hell bent because hell was made for you, for the devil and his angels. So people of God, don't lose the shield of faith. Going on. Uh, spider Native American symbolism. And I want to say this in the word of God, Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Did y'all hear me say that? Now somebody go like, why did he say that? I said that because there are there are cultures that believe that the spider goddess or other gods created the universe. And I am a believer. Got nothing to do with, with black man, white man, or Indian chief. It got to do with the fact that God is a spirit, neither male nor female. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's just the word. Now, let me go ahead. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Here the earth was brought into existence. Now, listen to what this says here. By listen at this. It says here, the earth was brought into existence by the might of the grandmother spider's energy. Ain't no grandmother spider energy brought the earth in existence. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Are y'all hearing me? What is the spider woman, the goddess of? She is generally a premier goddess of earth and sky, a creator being and a consort of the sun. She connects to earth and sky and created far and floodplains. She is associated by some Indian cultures with the moon, the rainbow, the four directions, weaving or the deer. She can make magic and transform herself. So this demon, I'm called just what it is, this demon can transform itself. And here you are, you born again, got the spirit of the living God. So when they come at me, I say this right now. And I know some of you root working, conjure, witchcraft, Santorin, or whatever name you want to call yourself, is hearing me here talk. And guess what? I don't care. And I ain't afraid. Why? Because of the simple fact, you are not my enemy. The one you serve is. Are oh, you hearing me? And my prayer to God for every single one of you, conjure men, botanical, botanical person, amen, whatever your name is, amen, is for you to get to know the name of Yeshua, for you get to know that the name of Jesus and in his name is salvation and there is no other beside him for our redemption. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ the righteous, not these little middle failing demons. Are oh, you hearing me? But that spider spirit is on. So what you're talking about here, when you're having these spider dreams and you're having these spider manifestations, this thing ain't no ain't, so, ain't something that just all of a sudden you're crazy. You're not crazy. Or you hear me? You are not losing your mind. These things are being conjured and used and used and attacked and even worshipped throughout the earth right now, soldier. Now let's hear that. Here goes a fable here. And this is one that blew my mind. Yeah, but I, I put this in just for the sake of interest here, listen at this so-called spider Christianity symbol of a fable or a myth, because that's what it is, a straight up myth. Listen at this. They have out the story of Mary and Joseph sheltering Jesus while fleeing to Egypt from the soldiers was a beautiful one. Now listen at this lie. In the end, they were saved by a small spider. It worked tirelessly to entire and snare, and snare the in its web and they arrived to find the spider's web unbroken which had them to believe that no one had recently entered the cave so sparing their own lives ain't that you not the word of God so I will not receive or accept that but you once again trying to weave the power of the spider the beauty of the spider or the fierceness of the spider into Christianity. Let me go ahead and hit some more and what have you. I hope that some of y'all can get something out of this and what have you. And the reason why 
Brother Hopkins wrote this. The reason why Brother Hopkins studied this, unlike some of you who only has an opinion, I have to, I've actually had to deal with this demon more than one time. So you know, I don't know. I don't know whether I can believe that. Imagine not. You ain't had no battle. When you had to battle this thing, or when you had hundreds, I've had this. Simone, Sister Simone Ike, I've had hundreds of people calling me who've been attacked by these spells sent at them. Now, here goes a, a objects used with spider spells. A spider-shaped talisman is supposed to bring luck, including in love life affairs. It attracts one's beloved one. So there are people who cast spells, what they call a web love. Now the reason why now, I, now 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 the reason why I, I cut it off there because it's a lot to it, but I ain't gonna put no incantation on my on my on my post. Not gonna happen. But listen at this: an old Russian ritual and spell for a woman wanting to prevent her husband from having an affair with another woman, and it then, and then it goes right into right on the internet. You can get how to cast that spell. Also, there was a Kabbalistic ritual from spell casters. Maxima, to make your wishes come true. And that kind of stuff is all on the internet. To carry out the following black magic ritual, you will have to sacrifice one spider. Are y'all getting this? I'm saying again, are y'all getting this? There are folks out there doing this and they're activating. Come on, this is crazy, but it's happening. Listen to this. Seeing a spider in the morning. Okay, yeah, here goes some of the things they're saying. Seeing a spider in the morning. Things take care of complexities. Seeing a spider in the evening, letter, news, presence, as, as, as surprises. Now, these are all just no more than spider divination, almost like you're going to, to the horror stroke. No more than that. Spiders running down the hall. That's a good sign. Uh, please, yeah, good sign. You better get out of my way while I squash him. Spiders going down on the thread of falling from the ceiling. That's a good sign. Yeah, right. A spider on a piece of clothing. That's money. No, living right, going to work, and trusting God, that's money. Please. Matter of fact, seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added. That's the money. Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, in my life, me and Elvis' life, we're not seeking money. All oh, we're seeking is serving. And as we serve God, God takes care of all of that for us. Also, a spider in a purse as a talisman attracts money. Get this. In other words, if you put a spider in your purse, it will attract money. This stuff, y'all. And this is the kind of stuff that is operating out there. A spider curse is a fate worse than death. Now, this one here is to make you fear. Or oh, if this happens, it's a fate worse than death. Sweetheart, get, let me tell you something. My life, my death is in God's hand. I'm going to say something to y'all right now, my, my friends. I, the, my life and my steps are ordered by the Lord. One day on Facebook, if the Lord should tarry, you're going to hear Apostle Hopkins has died. I want to help y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? And it ain't a death wish. It ain't suicide. It's the fact that I'm only here passing through and I ain't scared. Are you getting this? And don't be going around saying some demon must have killed him. I am not going to leave this world until God says so. And I'm going to live holy before him. I'm, he's going to help me live holy through him. He's going to help me walk righteous through him. He's going to bring me home when he's ready. Are y'all hearing this? See, let me tell y'all something. The biggest weapon that curses have on some people is fear and doubt and unbelief. You got to listen. Some of us. Got a redeemer that we're serving that we say one day he will call us all to the dead in Christ for raised first, and we which are alive shall be caught up with him. But yet we scared to death of a shadow of something that he's already given us by hope. Let me move on. Let me move on. Symptoms of this curse. Now, these are some of the symptoms, all right? Now, listen, symptoms of the spider curse includes both tactile and visual hallucination. This Darn thing. Good Lord of mercy. Boy, I, I, I'm i telling you, I'm just getting too through with this enemy. It deals with visual hallucinations. One common hallucination among these de those defiled by this affliction occurs when an afflicted individual feels stared at by someone. In other words, this thing 
has the ability to, to make one feel that they're always being stared at. Ah, we go. I got where I can get back to. Yeah, now nah, I'm back where I want to be. Ah, yeah, go. Got that? This spider spirit spell will make a person feel like there's something always staring at them. I ain't finished. You wait, y'all. Wait. But wait now. I'm trying to tell you. And this is a demonic manifestation. The afflicted M -M 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 imagines the starer has spotted a spider on their body, but is unsure of how to break the bad news. In other words, it makes you feel like the spider, they're all, it's all over me. They feel like it's all over my body. Are you hearing me? This is a part of what some of this stuff, these spider attacks. Now I'm talking now about the emotional part. This thing is trying to drive somebody insane. Are you hearing me? This thing is trying to drive somebody insane. Listen, the afflicted will also then begin to feel the legs of the spider scuttling on their body, always out of reach of the afflicted brushing hand. In other words, you feel like something is touching it, it's crawling all on you. I get this. Are y'all hearing me? Feeling that that thing is on their body. Listen. These paranoia-induced hallucinations do not give way after time passes. No, they accumulate until the person's entire body is covered with spiders that are always just out of reach, yet inescapable. Now, listen to this. And I, now, this was in my research, what I found. After many such incidents, one's entire world and self eventually becomes made of spiders. In other words, feeling like the spiders are everywhere. Now, the level of this spider curse, and I did not write this. Huh? I found this in research. The level of this spider curse is called formication. Formication, not fornication. Formication is a symptom where you hallucinate the feeling of an insect crawling in, on, or underneath your skin. This system, symptoms have many possible causes, including mental health disorders, medical conditions, and more. So this, when if this person has a has th has this a mental is issue, this thing is out to try to drive them insane. Some of you that are listening at me right now, I ask the Father. I'm almost I'm almost through, y'all. I'm almost through. Thank you for bearing with me, Father God. I ask in the name of Jesus. That those out there that are being attacked emotionally and mentally, if it's a health issue, I ask you, Father God, Father God, to heal them from formication. Heal them, Lord God, from feeling like these things are crawling all over. Lord God, anyone that has sent a spell, sent an incantation coming against them, I ask you, Father God, to loose them and heal them now. Father, as I get ready to close, Lord God, I want to thank you that I stand upon the rock, which is Jesus. Lord God, I thank you that upon this rock, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, as I am praying right now, I ask you, Lord God, for your anointing and grace to heal and break every spider curse, uh, every spider curse that have been going. Lord God, I ask you to destroy every egg of the, of the cockatoos, uh, every egg of the serpent. I ask you, Father God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, that every evil and to tangle your life, to destroy your family, to bind and hinder. I ask the spirit of the living God to loose these people down. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, Father, that there's nothing too hard for you. Lord God, I thank you even for giving me this teaching and allowing me to articulate it. Father God, somebody out there is going to be helped. Somebody out there is going to resist. Somebody out there is going to stand against it. Lord God, I praise you, and I give you Glory, honor, and praise for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that destroyed these jokes. Father God, I even pray for those that have mental health issues that they go get the help, the counseling they need. I do know everything is not a demon. I recognize that, Father. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, but God, that but those that are intentionally casting spells, and you out there, and you know you're doing it, those that are trying to trap people's souls. Lord God, I ask in Jesus' name that you hinder and shut down and break everything that they're trying. I ask this in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you right now. 
for saving and delivering folk. Huh? Lord God, someone out here in the sound of my voice, you may feel like giving up and walking away from God and life because this has been so hard. Lord God, I ask you in Jesus' name, help them to hold on and stand. Somebody out there feels like I'm losing my mind. Nobody believes me. Everybody thinks I'm crazy and I'm lost. You have not lost your mind. I ask you, Father God, in Jesus' name, to bring them out of the healing, Father. And I give you praise, glory, and honor that others will hear and see this YouTube message and they will be able to help people instead of think they're crazy. They will be able to direct them if they need a need to go for mental health issues and they're not crazy. And then those that have been working witchcraft and conjuring and you're out there, ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You are out there doing it. I ask the Father to save you, to deliver you, and to bring you up from that sin and mind because you're being deceived. And Father God, I thank you and I praise you that you have given me at the latter end of my life a boldness to teach this stuff and have nothing to fear, to teach the truth of what I'm learning and come home to you, Father. Lord God, Evie and I are ready for whatever you say it's done. But between now and then, I'm going to do what you told me in 2003 when you had a heavenly vision that spoke to me prophetically, said I would be speaking to a generation. Some of them are in church and some of them are not going to church because of different issues they've had. And you said they are your people. Lord God, they are your called out church. Father God, I ask you in Jesus name, if someone has fallen away from you, Father, I pray that they return to the Lord Jesus Christ. If someone is listening at me and you haven't given your life to the Lord, ask him, Lord Jesus, I asked you to come into my heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, in Yeshua's name, I ask you to forgive my sins. And Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, to Father God, to cleanse me and wash me. I want to be in your kingdom. I want to serve you, Lord. I come out of agreement with all the witchcraft that I used to do. Tell the Lord that. Tell him that I come out of agreement. I reject it now. And I want you, Lord, to forgive me, God. Forgive me, O living one. Forgive me, O holy one. Forgive me, Father. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, look, guys, I'm going to get ready to go. Oh, by the way, later tonight, I will be with Apostle Patricia Gardner, and we will be doing a, a, uh, a deliverance uh, teaching and having a mass deliverance with her. I think that's going to be 6 p.m. Chicago time and what have you. So I'm looking forward to it on our Easter standard time will be 7, I think 7 p.m. for me. Well, guys, I'll tell y'all like I usually do. I want y'all always know that God, he's watching and he cares. Bye-bye. God bless.